God has designed our souls to be satisfied in worshiping him. Or maybe let me say it another way. Our souls, your soul, will never be satisfied apart from worshiping God. Now that's a bold statement. I just said it doesn't matter how big or luxurious your house is, it won't satisfy you. I just said it doesn't matter how much money you make, it won't satisfy you. Doesn't matter how healthy you are or how comfortable your 401k is, none of these things will satisfy your soul. Your soul is designed to be satisfied in worshiping God. To believe in Jesus is to say, I have sinned, I've sought my own way in this world apart from God's way in his word. My sin leads to death. Indeed, it's true, but I believe that Jesus died on a cross for my sin and rose from the grave in victory over it to make it possible for me to be forgiven of all my sin, reconciled to a relationship with God in whom my soul will be satisfied forever. This is the essence of salvation, so don't miss it. Salvation is not just saying some words in order to save your skin for eternity and then living just like the rest of the world running after the same stuff this world is running after. That is not salvation. Salvation is forgiveness of your sin accompanied by satisfaction in your soul. Salvation is freedom from sin and freedom from the pursuit of satisfaction in this person or that possession, this position or that pleasure. Salvation is satisfaction in knowing and worshiping God, which then totally transforms the tenor of what happens when we as the church, as a group of Christians, gather together. See how a right understanding of Christianity changes worship from duty to delight. True Christians do not gather out of a sense of obligation. True Christians gather together out of a sense of celebration. We have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And we gather together because we want to feast on his goodness in worship. I ask that, even use the phrase true Christians, because I fear that many professing Christians gather to worship God more as a matter of religious routine. But there is a lack of real, authentic desire for God. What I'm saying is if you don't desire God, it's at least worth asking if you know God. And I long for every one of you to see and experience worship, not as duty, but as delight.